Hi guys, welcome to today's video. Hope you've had a good new year and uh, welcome to the channel in 2023. We'll be continuing to put the content out like we have been doing once a week. Missed last week because one being Christmas Day, two I wasn't very well either and I just didn't have the energy to um, post a video. But today we're back, we're looking at a very popular lens with um, amateur wildlife photographers, even some pro photographers or wildlife photographers think use this lens. Uh, this is a Sigma 100 and 50 to 600 mil contemporary and this is my dad's lens but I've used it um, and tested it and got some sort of sample images and stuff from it as well just to go through as a review as it say it seems to be pretty much the go-to lens for any wildlife photographer who's sort of starting out and wants to get a really good range of reach but I thought I'd look over it review it and um, sort of go through the images that I got when I went to Whipstain Zoo um, the usual lens I would take for a trip like this and the lens I used to take the photo behind us here is the 500mm f4 um, and this is obviously combined with my 1DX Mark II. I was using the 1DX Mark I with the contemporary lens um, just because I had the Mark II on here and this gives a 500mm reach. You get a slightly longer reach obviously with 600mm um, but it doesn't tend to be as sharp at 600mm as it is at like 500mm so the photos I took were limited to 500mm just because that's where, in my opinion, the sharpest point is um, limited to on this lens. Um, but it is good because it will give us like for like, sort of side by side image quality compared to the 500 mil there. And I do have a photo of, which we'll look at in a bit, of a cheetah taken on this lens, a cheetah taken on that lens. And we can have a look and, and sort of see what you think. Um, the image quality difference is considering that you can pick these up for six seven hundred pounds and the 500 mils are about two thousand pound so there's twice as much money as there twice as much quality in the file so we'll have a look at that in a second first of all as always though what we're going to do is go through the lens and look at all the functionality on the lens and show you that then we'll go into the images and then i'll give you my final thoughts as always so let's uh, crack on and get in there So guys, this is the contemporary Sigma 150 to 600 mil. It's quite a long boy, but say actually fairly light and very easily hand holdable. Um, easy sub two kilo per camera on there. You're, you're still not talking a lot. Um, great for APS-C or full frame. Obviously I use it on full frames. My cameras are all pretty much now full frame, um, but you'll get that extra bit of reach if you use an APS-C um, on here. Obviously different mount types as well, they do them for Nikon, Sony, um, Canon. This is the Canon mount version um, for here. Old lens but um, still exactly the same as one they sell you now so it's good to go through this. First of all you've got a removable lens cap put there. Um, which does shorten down quite a bit, it doesn't lose much weight on there but you do have some grooving on the inside of the um, lens cap itself to help with reflections into it. But because it's not a very deep um, lens cap you really don't want to be shooting into the sun massively because unlike the Canon ones that are quite long on the 500 mil and have felt in them um, these don't reflect light as well but you shouldn't really be shooting massively into the sun anyway unless it's the last resort so you've got your foot on here for your tripod mount this is easily removable round um, to get your sort of positions there you've got your groove lines um, on different points to show when you're at 45 degree angles You've got your window here to show your focusing distance, um, which is is there. It's, it's not something I've ever really looked at, but you know you can sort of see what sort of measuring distances you are, metering distances you are from that. On the side, you do have some switches, so you have a lock switch um, that locks your um, zoom into place to stop with any sort of um, lens creeping at all when you're carrying the lens at 150 mil. You can lock it in increments in the middle, but what I do find is the lock isn't very good. It does sit it there, but as soon as you twist at all, um, it unlocks it. So it's only really useful at 600 mil, but even then you can still do it, but you do have to pull quite hard to get that to lock, unlock, and at 150 mil there as well, and it does actually lock pretty securely at 150 mil. But that's there. I tend to try and sort of let the limit I use is 500 mil on this lens just because of sharpness when you get to 600 mil it seems to be a bit soft so that's where I sit on it there 
you've got your focusing modes, you've got, this can be plugged into the dock, so you can adjust stuff and make ma um, your own sort of settings on here, but you've got auto, MO, and manual focus there. You've got your limiter switch here, so you've got 2.8 to 10 meters, or 10 to infinite, or you've got full, which is will be 2.8 to inf infinite. Um, that needs to have it locked on 2.8 to 10 at the moment. I would tend to potentially have it on full, personally. Um, you've got your stabilization modes, so you've got one, two, and off. One tends to be the most common one that people will use on a wildlife sort of situation. And you've got your custom buttons that we've never used, we don't have the dock, but you could program them to do whatever you wanted to. Um, so you could have different focusing distances to what's even on there, even if you really wanted to, and have them down here on your custom buttons. But yeah, that that's the main stuff on there. So it's super, super light compared to what I tend to use. It's, it's about half the weight of my 300 mil, and you get a 600 mil distance there on reach. Um, you can remove the collar as well. So if you did want to just have it as completely as handheld wall with no sort of um, things sort of in the way when you're kind of doing, if you're doing manual focus and this gets in the way, you can remove that. I tend to keep on even if I don't have it on a tripod just because I can put my fingers under there and carry the camera and the lens with that as you're walking along because there's a nice bit of gap under there for your fingers to kind of sit onto there. So yeah, that's the overall of the lens there. What we're going to do now is look at some photos. We're going to look at a couple of photos of just this lens on its own. And then we'll look at a photo of this lens side by side to a photo I took at the same time of day, but obviously on a 1DX Mark II rather than a 1DX and not exactly the same position, but same time of day, same lighting on the 500mm compared to this lens here. So we'll get into that right now. Okay, so the first photo we're going to look at here is of a cyclist I used to, I do do a lot of cycling myself and I used to do a lot of photography for the racing where I used to live um, in Somerset. But this is at 600mm, um, fairly low shutter speed to so try and get the wheel blur going on here. But you can actually see that we focused on the head here. This is at f6.3, um, so you're not going to get as much blur out as you were, would do on like a 2.8 or even on my f4 500mm. But um, the separation is still really good, even at 6.3. Focus on the face, so it was really low shutter speed. I think it was about 1 300th of a second to try and get this motion blur in the wheels that you can see here. Um, but say so really sharp, no issues at all there with, in my opinion, of sharpness. It looks really, really good. Next one we're going to look at is something from lockdown, actually, that I, I dug up from when I used to have one of these lenses myself. And this is um, the Thank You NHS Spitfire. Um, this is a 600 mil and a very bright day. But even still, this is cropped in as well slightly, but a lower shutter speed to try and get some prop blur, but still tracked really well. And Thank You NHS is perfectly sharp for, for a photo like this. There is a bit of noise in the photo, um, but I think that's more just because of the harsh light and stuff like that rather than a fault of the lens is more probably my problem rather than the lens problem. But again, this is 600 mil, so it's not the sharp as it could have been if I was at 500 mil, but because of how far away the plane is, you have real no choice to shoot at 600 mil, then crop in still even on that. I'd even struggle to kind of get a super sharp image, I think, with the 500 mil if I had to crop in as far as I did with this. So really impressive, to be honest, at 600 mil to get with a slow shutter speed to get a photo like this. And the last photo was promised, um, a pair of photos here of cheetahs. The one on the left is from the Sigma, the one on the right is from the Canon. So this gives you kind of the real sort of indication of what the difference is between the two, sort of a prime lens almost, and a, a sort of more basic zoom lens. The colours on the on the right are just way more natural um, from the 500mm compared to the 150-600. Um, I was shooting at 500mm as well to kind of keep it like for like in sort of view distance but you can see the just colors just a little bit more natural there's a little bit more sharpness in the eyes on the 500 mil but that's what you're sort of paying the extra for um is to get that extra image quality by using primes and sort of suffering to a point where you are having to carry more equipment and it's heavier equipment to get a better photo and you do get a better photo with better lenses there's there's no way of 
sort of cutting shutting that at all the one on the left with 150 to 600 is a little bit soft in my opinion compared to the one on the right you've got a better depth of field because it's f4 rather than um, 6.3 and it just is just in general just a sharper image i think which um, especially on the eyes just looks better part of that you could say comes from the o1dx mark ii but the majority of it is in the glass rather than the body um so there that's that gives you a good sort of like for like i'm not saying to you guys oh don't buy a a nice good quality 600 pound 150 600 zoom lens and save the extra money and get a 2000 pound uh, 500 mil but if you're looking for the best quality photos possible you always get that from a prime over a zoom and this is what this is trying to represent for you there so that's my overall review of the 150 to 600 mil lens um i think to be honest if you're just starting out and you want a one lens to kind of do it all sort of thing you don't want to be carrying around different prime lenses like i do then this is just absolutely perfect so for the money that you can get these for about 550 600 pounds second hand um or if you really want to go up to the sports version but you're looking at about a thousand pound upwards you get a slightly better aperture at the longer end it's better weather sealed um but it is a lot heavier so if you're looking for something light to carry around if if you don't feel that you can carry around a bigger heavier lens then for sure grab this the camera body on there it weighs less than my 500 mil with a camera body on the end of it easily hand holdable even at 600 mil what you will find is though at 600 mil because it is so long if it's a windy day you will get a bit of buffeting side to side but even that i think even fully extended we are a fair amount shorter than the 500 mil so and it's definitely way lighter that's that lens and body combo is seven kilos um so it's fairly heavy this is say way lighter with the body on it easily hand holdable i can hold the 500 mil but only for short periods with this you could do a whole day trip very easily with it so i say if, if you're looking for a Either, either one lens to do it all and you don't want to buy a so spend three grand on a canon 100 to 500 or if you're just starting out and you want a good value long reach lens for wildlife then it's absolutely perfect this lens itself my dad's had this um, for five years i think now still working it's got a few sort of chips dents and stuff on it but it has been heavily used in that time frame um, and done a lot of different trips and stuff so and it's still still working very well it just looks a little bit beaten up so i hope you enjoyed the video hope you enjoyed the first video of new year and i hope you guys uh like subscribe and comment as you always do and i'll catch you guys in the next one thanks for watching goodbye